What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a shout out to our new Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Jackie the Sexy Hobby Cook, Echo, not Gecko, Melissa Espinoza, Mr. I Like Pog, Content Junkie, Lindsay Reposarda, Kenjiro Talbashi, Arazuku, Nia, Sebastian Austin, Commander Nom Nom, Daniel Hudson, Joseph Vega, Garrett, Michael Townley, The One Who Crawls, Mark Trobo, Darwin Kissling, Bryce Canales, Kala Dolman, Lucille Bird, Eric Smith, Lupus Deus, David King III, Alan Barty, Michael Pedigo, Sandra Halverson, Kelsey Decker, Gavin King, Freddy69, Zach Sharp, OXL, Rondi Warnock, DDB, Miyamoto Musashi, Bassman, Flipside TV, The Imagination Squad 1, Alucard Lolly, Seth Johnson, Sasso Oselnik, These Myths, and Rashawn Moore. And I would also like to give a big shout out to our executive producers, Joshua Fix, The Gimpster 101, Evan Brummett, and welcome our new executive producer, Angel Morales. Thank you all very much for your support. If you wish to become a YouTube member, click the join button, which is right beside the subscribe button down below. And if you wish to become a Patreon supporter, feel free to click the link down below to find out more. We'll see you there. Ah, the power yeah, Christ compels you. Getting... Ah! Oh, she didn't hear. Bathroom, bathroom, bathroom. Holy shit. Same, same area, same area. I'm locked in here. I'm locked in. No. Stay away. Stay away from me. No. Omelette du fromage, c'est omelette du fromage, c'est omelette du fromage, omelette du fromage. Omelette du fromage? Omelette du fromage. Omelette du fromage. Omelette du fromage? Omelette du fromage. 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 Did that fix? Yay! Okay. Wow. I was wondering why things were so weird. It's like we were just communicating back and forth with just those, those very, very simple words in French, which is literally just a cheese omelet. Omelet du fromage. Oh God, he's broken. Okay, we're gonna have to resort <laughs> to desperate measures on this. All right, lean over. No. Okay, you're fixed. Okay. Thank goodness you scared me. Okay, so. For those of you who remember Dexter's Laboratory, there was an episode where Dexter uh, was trying to learn French, and uh, he put this little cap on and a record at the top that was supposed to teach him French as he slept. And it's supposedly a legitimate method of learning stuff. I tried it with Japanese, and I don't think it really worked. Well, well the thing <laughs> is, with Dexter, as the record was playing, it got to a certain part, and... The record kept skipping. skipping. Yeah. It was like omelette du fromage, omelette du fromage, omelette du fromage. Yeah. To which, <laughs> as soon as he woke up, that was all he could say. And then, uh, eventually, he goes to school. The girls like him because, oh my gosh, Dexter, French is the language of love. Say it again, omelette du fromage. And he goes and makes world peace by like saying omelette du fromage he has a number him. one hit by literally going to the night like omelette du fromage <laughs> but yet he can't but yet he gets back home and he can't open up his uh laboratory again and it self-destructs meanwhile Dee Dee's in the background teasing that's all you can say that's all you can say <laughs> that's all you can say so yeah <clears throat> needless to say omelette du fromage was a was a very hilarious uh, thing that that happened, and uh, there was it actually got revitalized a little bit with the meme a few years ago. Uh, it's just like say it again, like very like, and yep. instead it was like redneck. It was like, it's like I love your said, accent. Say say that, say something again. Like, Wash and dishes. Yeah, <laughs> I love Let's your go. accent. Say it again. Let's go mud. Let's go. <laughs> I love your accent. Say it again. Better get your ass out this bed. And then the really bad one that I saw was like, I love your accent. Say it again. Is that in the attic? Is that in the attic? 
<laughs> oh my gosh. But this one was requested on our uh, Discord. This is uh, Binging with Babish, the Omelette du Fromage from Dexter's Laboratory. I'm excited right now because we have never reacted to any of his videos. No, we have not. As far as I've been here. And and, I actually really like his channel. And I've already subscribed to him. And uh, I've been trying to get uh, the supplies to start trying some of his, like, beginner cooking videos because I would really like to learn to cook like him. Well, yeah. Well, Andrew, keep in mind, Andrew Ray has been, like, he has been, like, cooking for years and years and years. And uh, his secret is, like, one of the secrets I've noticed, and you probably noticed it too, always a little little bit more uh, kosher salt. He always adds just a little bit more kosher salt in some way. Salt is the secret. Uh, but uh, this one was actually requested on our Discord by, lo and behold, the uh, the kiddiest one herself, Oxy. Yeah, Oxy was the one who uh, recommended this. So, hi, Oxy. Thank nice. you for the recommendation. So, uh, we're going to get to this. Let's get it up on screen. This is Binging with Babish, Omelette du Fromage from Dexter's Laboratory. Here we go. This episode is sponsored by ButcherBox. ButcherBox delivers ah, high quality yes. beef, chicken, pork, and seafood directly to your home in an oh, yeah. eco-friendly, 100% recyclable box. Mm. New members will get six free grass-fed steaks. That's two New York strips mm. and four sirloins added to their first box for free. Yeah. Go to the link in the video description for How more info. Is that box? I don't know. Let's see. What did you say? Omelette fromage? Oh, Dexter. Dexter. French is the language of love. <laughs> Say it again, Dexter. Omelette du fromage. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to <laughs> Binging with Dad. Never this gets old. Taking a look at the omelette du fromage from Dexter's laboratory, for which we're going to need some fromage and some omelette. We're going to start, as so many omelettes do, with eggs. Crack them against the side of the bowl, <laughs> dig out any shell pieces that inevitably fall in. It's and omelette we'll I was working on for a while, eggs. too. And we're going to add a big pinch of omelettes are fun. I've made some really bitching nice omelets and some really mediocre like omelets. It's hard to it's hard to master exactly how to make the really well, really good. You ones. have to well. There's so many one, different ways to make them too, according yeah. to all the different there, like, instructional see, videos and stuff. He's already committing a cardinal sin here in a lot of people's circles. A lot of people do not make omelets with uh, with milk in the eggs, and not only that, but uh, he I don't think he properly seasoned the eggs, and also. Uh, also, See, I would do it with a technique closer to what I make scrambled eggs with, which is very much exactly Gordon Ramsay's uh, recipe. And I wouldn't do a pot; like I would just do it in a pan. But okay, I would put my eggs directly in the pan with some butter, and I would start beating them in the pan. Once it's like to a consistency where you could mix something else into it, I would throw in sour cream, mix that in, and at that point, it's going to start to solidify and then you're going to spread it around the pan and let it start to become like an omelet throw yeah. your toppings in on it then fold it over flip it my dad was a done. master of, of omelet making i remember one morning like he asked me what do you want in your omelet and i'm like can i have bacon he's like i got bacon i'm like can i get cheese what kind i'm like can i get some uh, some uh, pa- uh parmesan and uh and america he's like absolutely throws that in there and then perfectly flips it over does like the whole like skillet flip thing me as an adult what do you want in your omelet yes as a kid i didn't know though but what my all, dad what all do you my dad's have? master of it like because uh you can probably throw some of everything you got in there yeah it's like how many different kinds of cheese you got put them all yes. in there all right back it's to like this bacon ham sausage Anything. Yeah, like hash browns if you got them. I, I wouldn't personally make hash browns and throw them in, but if you got them, ah, fuck it, throw them in my, there. My dad wasn't afraid to make anything with his omelets, and they came out perfect every time. I, I studied how the he did it. omelet, to me, is essentially a breakfast Subway sandwich. And you it kind of is. throw whatever the fuck you want on it, pretty much. Kind, it kind of is, yeah. Anyway, let's get back to this. I know people down below are already angry at us. Probably. To make. We're going to grab our very smallest whisk and begin feeding. We just want you call that small? Andrew. Of yellow or I'm white. disappointed That's in no you. Problem. In a large nonstick skillet, we are melting two tablespoons. It just looked like an unwieldy whisk. Once it's all melted yes. and foamy, we're going to dump in our eggs and move them around a little bit. Uh, I usually use a metal fork on my nonstick pans. No, but you do it. not. So you scratch the fork. shit out of the bottom of your pan. He's some yellow American. Come on, homie. He's fucking with you. Three yellow American singles. 
he's going very fast on this, so this is obviously the other half over the cheese, letting it cook uh, a little bit longer until we get some nice brown stuff on the outside, like, and there you have it. Yeah, he's doing the much. ridiculous An authentic simple. Parisian recipe. I'm just kidding. This is obviously just a straight up American omelet with some cheese. Yeah. I just wanted to absolutely freak out any French viewers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> fair, Andrew. Good yeah, one. I knew he was Actually, fucking with you. Good one, good one. By the time I saw him throw craft singles on there, I was like, he's fucking with that The craft singles is one thing, but also the milk. Because I know my dad, yeah. my dad's very specific. If you use milk, it has to be very sparingly. That was not sparingly. That was like a good, like, quarter quarter cup. Not to mention the comment the about the metal chefs. Chef. First thing we're doing differently is cracking our three eggs on the table, not the bowl. So he wasn't even going to do that, like, like jokingly. Right right it. it should get a little frothy. Next thing we're changing is the cheese. From what I can yeah, tell, the no milk in this one. This Plus that whisk was ridiculous. So yeah. That up before heading over to the stove top, we're going like, to preheat uh, an eight-inch omelet pan. After about 60 to 90 seconds of <clears> medium heat, we're going to add one tablespoon or about 15 grams of unsalted butter. It shouldn't sizzle too much. I like that he tells you what heat to put your stove on, because Gordon Ramsay never, Ramsey never fucking tells you what heat to turn the stove to. Metal tools on non -stick yes! I've found that wooden chopsticks are an excellent tool for this application. Wooden chopsticks the or plastic or a plastic the spatula. The never thought about that. The pan. Shake the pan and stir the eggs vigorously. Well, we got no shortage of chopsticks. Heat. This is going to cause yeah. the smallest the possible make curds a bunch to form. Yeah. We're going to quit stirring the very second that the eggs are no longer liquidy. Drop the heat all the way down to low. Working quickly, tilt the pan down away from you and shake it, pushing the majority of the omelet to that side, ah. and then using a rubber spatula, yeah, a, little, a tiny one, yeah, we're start to spatula. roll the omelet, starting at the near end. I've got one, just not that small. Halfway. And we're gonna run our spatula underneath the omelet to make sure that it's loose. Keep the pan tilted down and tap it. I, we're just gonna sort of me. I'd already be messed up and like have it all all over the cheese. friggin' eye and of the. Carefully folding the far end. Oh, he's doing a roller. Roll. We're working very quickly. He's doing a roll, uh, a rolling one. We don't want the outside layer of egg to be too thick, and we don't want to lose our beautiful creamy custardy center. Once the omelet's rolled up, invert it onto a plate. If you're still learning, like I am, you might need to make some minor corrections. And there you have it, omelet au fromage, which we're going to season lightly with some big flakes. That looks, salt, that that looks very nice. Freshly ground black pepper and some fresh chopped chives. And then see if we've made it correctly. We have to take a look at it. There's so many section. things he's suggesting here that I just don't even have the, the stuff to egg, do. Surrounded by a soft, luxuriant, custard-like curd and melty cheese. As mm. you can see, my omelet is way too thick. So we're going to take another those. crack at this. So so to speak, and I'm going to make some money. Yeah, I want an herb. We'll start by like salt thing, the eggs. like a fresh this herb. Their proteins and helps make garden them more tender. Something. Plus, we're obviously going to beat these together. Out back or... like, this is what Tiny Whisk was born to do. Like Next that. up, we're going to strain the beaten egg through a fine mesh sieve. This is going to help get rid of the glaze. What is the oh glaze yeah? Egg? I'll show you. Huh. You've probably seen it, it before when separating that... egg yolks. Yeah, from whites. It's this little stringy thing that connects the two. This can be detrimental to your omelet's texture. So by straining it out, you're going to get a more uniform creamy curd. Next thing I'm going to do different is use a carbon steel pan. This one is much thinner than my omelet pan, so it's going to retain less heat. Okay. So when cooling things down during the rolling process, the pan will cool off faster and it won't cook the outer curd. Okay. Much, so it won't be I saw what he did there. He pretty much had the one half already it. like halfway pushed over, then he added the cheese and then he finished it. Mm-hmm. That's... Any final shaping adjustments, we're going to take okay. a page out of Chef John's book and smear this whole thing down with butter. This is not only going to add flavor and a decadent okay. sheen to our omelet, it's going to help our toppings stick more effectively. So now let's cut in half again and take a look at how we did. Yeah. As you can see, the outer curd is much thinner, which means more creamy, soft, custardy inner curd ends up in your mouth. Yep. There you have it. What I really hope is an authentic... I'm about to go mash. make a fucking but omelet when we get done with this. laboratory enough to really get that cartoon look... Oh! to use these heirloom eggs. Yeah, the Easter egg. Are. colors like brown and sort of blue. But blue, most green. Their yolks are an absolutely alien bright orange. Yes. I don't know what they're feeding these chickens, but it's either very good or very bad. Same amount it's, of it's just a natural evolution that the chickens took. You see, my grandma actually was raising Easter eggs. I told you this earlier, actually. Yeah. My grandma raised Easter eggers, and uh, I actually went over, and every time I went over to her house, I always asked, like, can, can, can I get some green eggs there, Granny? And she would always come out. She'd have like a full dozen of these Easter egg or green eggs. And I'd just be like, oh. And then you crack them open. They were the bright orange. I was like, oh. And they're so rich, too. It's the best tasting egg I've ever had in my entire life. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam. I am. Would you like them over here? No, I would not I'm like gonna them I'm going to stab here. you with a spear. 
That was the, the that was the next alone, line. Features. Sorry. Before, so take your green eggs and ham and go the hell agitate, home. Agitate, shake, tilt, roll, tap stuff. I'll, I'll eat a green egg. I'll eat green eggs. What egg. I think is a much more cartoon-like omelet. And yes, it looks absolutely crazy, but let's try it. See what it tastes like. First, a quick curd inspection. Not bad. And let me tell you, folks, these eggs cost ten ninety nine a dozen, and they taste like it. They are the eggiest eggs that ever egg. Yes. But if you're looking for the meatiest meat that ever needed, you might want to check out today's meat. sponsor, Yeet Butcher the Box. Meat. Butcher Box sources from farmers and fishermen. Who meet oh, the highest bacon. standards for quality. You can choose your box type and now that we have a grill and can right. skip. Yeah, now that we got the outdoor grill, man. That would be will come frozen at peak oh. freshness in an eco-friendly I don't know. percent recyclable box. You can create your own custom box. So much meat that I'm not gonna be able to make it all fresh. You, well, well, well again, that's the thing. Uh, See, that's what I want to try too. Top like, sirloins added to their oh, first box for free. Good link in the video description for more info. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we got ourselves a... Because I'm pretty sure that one he just showed was from his uh, tutorial video of uh, how to make that steak. Yeah, well, I guarantee you he's done like several sponsorship videos for like... Because uh, whenever he does food-oriented ones, I really want Omaha Steaks to work together with Babish. Because Omaha Steaks, they have the best, like, the best quality beef I've ever had in my entire life. And also, there's a beef, there's like a, a steak or a hamburger steak recipe I'm really wanting to try. I actually told you about it earlier. A little bit of uh, a little bit of pineapple uh, juice and a little bit of honey. And effectively, it can make it to where you can pretty much cut the meat with a chopstick. Like you can literally like run it through it and it is soft as can be. Huh. They actually came up with that recipe because there was this Italian singer... Uh, who had a bad tooth and couldn't bite into anything, and they gave him a uh, they gave him a steak that had been cooked like that, and the and the opera singer said it's the best steak he ever had, and he couldn't and because of his bad tooth he couldn't really do anything else. But okay, so yeah, like I've been uh, watching his basics with yeah Irish series yeah his a uh, chicken pot pie one there one of the only things about it is just like. I I don't understand how to keep a kitchen stocked like he has his stocked because he's a pro cook, dude. That's why. Yeah, no, but like he gives you. He's supposed to be giving you like tutorials on how you can learn to do this, you know. But well, some of it takes so many different ingredients that I'm just like, how do you keep all of this stuff without shit going bad all the time? You know? I like, guarantee you, he probably cooks on the regular just to maintain his skills. He invites people over to eat at his house. And he cooks on the regular. That's what I'm thinking, anyway. Besides, now that he's moved out of New York City, he moved out for, I believe, tax purposes and also security purposes, because I remembered his first few episodes after he'd moved out of New York. Uh, he was, like, he got a sponsorship from, like, a security company, and he said, if you want your home to be more secure, uh, use this. And I'm just like, oh, so I guess... Babish ran into probably some bad activity, like his building got broken into or something. I don't know. Yeah, or he just got a sponsorship from him. Or maybe that. But in the podcast I was listening to uh, during Halloween, um, the No Sleep podcast has the same sponsorship from a security company. Yeah, well, it's just him moving out of New York for tax, I believe tax purposes was the number one thing because city taxes in New York are absolutely ridiculous. Like, just unbelievable but um now and also he's married i believe he's married now and or at least like in a very very serious relationship with uh i forget her name now but It'd be hard not to be if you cook like that <laughs> i'm pretty sure you could win over pretty much way anybody. way to a woman's heart is also like a lot of people say you know way to a man's heart is through his stomach same thing with women yeah it works with ladies too yes it does that is the god's honest truth Women love a man who knows how to cook. Most of them that and I've been clean with up after himself. Pretty simple, and will take chicken nuggets. But like, they definitely are impressed if you can make them something even better than that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I remember. Uh, I remember when I posted pictures of me when I learned when I finally like perfected how to make eggs in a nest. I, I posted that online, and I got so many messages from from women just like just like, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. And it was like on Instagram. They were like, oh my gosh. 
when did you learn how to cook? I'm like, oh, I know how to cook a fair, a fair amount. But. So that's the thing. I want to start making all of his videos, like, worth of food, and then start putting them all on my Facebook. Yeah. And then hopefully, like, eventually I'll have like, <laughs> the, the couple of single ladies still left on my friends book list. All the single ladies. Fa- Facebook all the friends ladies. list might be all like, oh, ladies. shit. All the single I want to come try that sometime. Be like, come on over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's the thing. I mean, I we will cook you food if you hang out with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sort of the same way. I, I I don't put my cooking out there to you know lure women in. Me, I'm just like I'm just like genuinely. <laughs> I'm not above it. Huh? I'm not above it. <laughs> like, uh, convinces I'm, the lady to no, hang no, out no, with no. me a little I mean, bit. I'll, I'll give you food. Fuck no, it. man, work the hustle. Work the hustle till you get what you want. But the thing is, I mean, me, I don't know. I've just I've just always tried to be as real as I can be, and that's. It's failed me so far. I guess maybe I need to change up my uh, my approach a little bit. Anyway, not to mention just learning to cook is a gateway to eating less garbage. This is true, and and also it'll save you money too. My because diet, cooking from home, yeah. Is, my diet for like most of my adult life has been pretty, fast food, pretty fucking questionable. Like mine too, mine too. Well, when you're when you're in the situation that we are in. I mean, you want to be able to cook from home because we pretty much work from home, but at the same time, Mm -hmm. it's just so easy to, like, drive. And plus, for me, driving also calms me down. Driving, like, puts me in a, a, like, a good mind state. My main thing is just I have to have a certain mood to be like, do I want to actually spend, you know, 15 to possibly an hour worth of time like uh, 15 minutes to like possibly an hour worth of time to prepare food, or do I just want to go grab a couple of fucking burritos from Taco Bell and get back that's, to what I was doing? That's the other before. thing, too. Prepper. Um, well, for me, I remember when I made those. Uh, that well, every time chicken. I do put the time into it, I'm just like, that was worth it. Yeah. Like, so the more I do it, the more I'm like, it's becoming more worth it, in my opinion, to just fucking make myself good food. Yeah. I'm. I'm pro- There's still a couple of fast food things that I'm just like, I can't make anything even close to that, unfortunately. Like. Yeah. Grilled yeah. cheese burritos from Taco Bell. Well, again, I mean, but you eventually get a I can probably get to the point where I can actually make a better grilled cheese burrito at home if I can figure that out, out the techniques. So well, can, a soft. Well, if you're wanting a soft shell one, at the, that point it's game over and I'm dying of a heart attack. So, <laughs> um, well, that's when we need to like get you on the treadmill and like run 15 minutes or walk 15 minutes a day and build yourself up. I don't know if, if it'll help if you still have high cholesterol levels. <laughs> it does. It does. It it helps immensely. But anyways. Yeah. But all right. We Basically, need to move. On. Moral of the story is I love food and I Yo, would like to learn here. to cook and I do love Bobish's channel. So yeah. If any of y'all would like for us to watch more of this, please send suggestions oh, yes. over here. I've seen a lot of them already, but same, same here. Send the suggestions anyway, because if I spot one that we haven't seen, I'll be like, "Hey, I haven't seen that one." Yeah, we need to watch some of these with Chad too, because I don't think Chad's seen as much Babish. Chad hasn't seen a lot of YouTube stuff, which that him and Nikki being introduced to like Internet Historian and uh, JonTron have like opened the door for him. He's just like, "Oh my gosh, yeah. this is the greatest thing ever." And I wonder if him watching Babish with Nikki, they'll just be like, we need to cook that one night. Because out of all the people in the house, they're the two that cook the most. Yeah, And the re- main reason we can tell is because of uh, the sink. The sink is always filled with dirty dishes, and the dishwasher is always full, too. Eh, but just goes to show you. Oh, yeah, that's my other thing about making food is, like... The cleanup. Yeah, the amount of times that the dishes are not even clean that you need to make something which, is which, a little bit over... That that's another thing be. too. That's one reason why I got the grill out there because it's the grill Chad out and, there clears up clears up a lot of the clutter. Yeah, Chad and Nikki uh, make food often here, so like quite often. That's the other thing. I basically want my own set of dishes, which I kind of have started a set already, but I keep them separate in a different cabinet. Yeah, and that way I'm like at least I know if I clean my own dishes and put them back there, you got they something. will actually be ready next time I want to cook because nobody looks in that cabinet. So. Yeah. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Binging with Babish, Omelette du Fromage, from Dexter's Laboratory. Hope you enjoyed. We hope to see you all in the next one. If you want to see more from Binging with Babish, click his name in the title of the video. If you want to see more from us, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. And until then, until then I'm Nate. I am Nick. We'll see you then, everybody. Peace out.